What's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching the sit down. Jasmine Cephas Jones is with us. Got a lot going on. How are you? <laughs> Hello, good. How are you? What's this chapter of your career been like so far? How's everything going? Um, so right now I'm in um, a Cyrano hole. Mm. That's what I, I would <laughs> that's say. That's how you're describing it? That's how I'm describing it. Um, I'm, I'm in a production of Cyrano. Um, it's at the Daryl Roth Theater in Union Square. Mm -hmm. um, and I play uh, Roxanne. So I play opposite uh, Peter Dinklage um, in Cyrano. And, um, you know, I haven't been back to the theater in a minute. Mm. And um, I always thought, like, what would be the project to bring me back? And this literally fell in my lap. Erica Schmidt, she adapted it. Um, and she's also a director. She directed the play, mm -hmm. and she's also Peter's wife. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, and um, she literally called me and was like, I really want you to play Roxanne. You just got to come in and chemistry read with Pete. And that went really well. The next day, she texted me and was like, can you be our Roxanne? And I was like, heck yeah. Like, Let's roll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's, um, it's really cool because um, there's music. The whole thing is underscored, mm. and uh, we there's singing in it. and. Uh, um, it's by the music. It's by the band The National. Um, so it's just really, really cool and like eclectic and like kind of pushes the boundaries with theater of like what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do, and it's just very, very original. Um, which you know, kind of coming off of Hamilton, it's mm. like what that. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Yeah. But also like what is like really cool and original and. Uh, I was just like, yeah. So I've I've been doing it since we started rehearsal in September. Oh wow. Yeah, and we end the run December twenty second. So what's an example of doing something you're not supposed to do in theater? Like something from the show? Give me well, an example. Well, so uh, it's it's a play with music, mm -hmm. and technically people are like, oh, it's a musical, and it's and it's not, not yeah. because with you know we don't have like these huge musical numbers that that like pushed the narrative of the story. It's actually kind of like a very intimate moment when, when we sing and it's just kind of like what's going on with the character at that moment. So th that I think that's what I mean. And also she adapted it. So it's like taking a classical piece that's like f four hours right. with cr so many acts and like boiling it down to, to two hours. Also Cyrano, the character has a long nose. Mm. And that's why he's insecure and doesn't tell Roxanne that he loves her, and Pete doesn't wear a nose. So it's kind of like going. It's a little bit different. All yeah, around. it's yeah. different all around. And there's music, you know, adding. This is a very like classical piece that was written in uh, the 1800s mm -hmm. and takes place in the 1600s. And also, you kind of don't know what period that we're in either, with like all the different costumes and kind of like how we speak. So it's just really like mixing it up. On a on a classical piece, so that's why. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and kind of like taking it and just looking at it a different way and creatively, like telling the story like completely different, you know. So, um, which I love. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, what's it been like getting back into the theater? Because like you're on this rocket ship of Hamilton, like life gets crazy, it's all over the place. Now I feel like you can probably just focus on the work and the play, and you're in a different point in your life too. Yeah, so, what's that all yeah. been like? Um, it's it's it feels it feels great. It just feels really nice to kind of like go back and like get your hands dirty and really like I don't know, go in and try to like analyze a character and figure out her arc and play it eight times a week and and find new things. I don't like I love doing film and TV, but there's just something that's like magical mm -hmm. about theater and really creating a family. I'm really close with my cast. It's only ten of us. Right. You know, you really can't hide up there. And no, definitely not. Um, it, it puts you it puts you on your toes. And like you know, when you're acting <laughs> with like opposite one of like I would say one of our best actors mm -hmm. that we have like of our time at the moment. Yeah. It, it really just like forces you to to do like good work and, and stay on top of that. Like you can't slack, you know, no. you can't, it's not one of you can't like you can not stay. bring it. Right. Like you have to bring it like eight times a week <laughs> and always stay on your toes because, you know, you're working with some amazing actors up there. So um, it kind of feels like a masterclass and mm. I, I always like try to work on projects that 
make you a better artist when you leave. And this is for sure, for sure one of those, one of those like creative pieces that just fulfill you to the, to the brim, you know, as a, as an artist. That's so, great. So yeah. what have you learned about yourself? How have you upped your game as an artist? I think it was, it's my first time playing a lead mm -hmm. in, in theater. So kind of like really trusting my instincts and like staying grounded and um, I don't know, really, really allowing myself to, to trust myself and my thoughts and um, speaking up, you know, mm. on, on what, and that, and also like that what I say me just means the same just as much as what Pete has to offer. Absolutely. You know, so, and just like believing that and being like, yeah, like I'm, I, I can do this 100%. How long did it take you to realize, like, yeah, I have a bigger seat at the table now. Like, I can really put my thoughts out there. And I am at that same level where it's like yeah. I don't have to kind of be in the background anymore. Right. Um, how long did it take yeah, you Yeah, like, when did you that? get comfortable with it? Did it happen right away on this show? Did it happen at some other point before the show? Like, when did it finally hit for you? Um, I, think, I think just this year. This year has been, like, a, just an amazing year for me. And um, I, I, I think it kind of started, like, with the show mm -hmm. mrs fletcher that was kind of the first thing that i that i booked starting the year and then like i worked on this like amazing project um quibi uh with quibi um jeffrey katzenberg mm -hmm. the new, uh, streaming, oh, services the new yeah. streaming service and um it's based off of like dog day afternoon with like lawrence fishburne and cool. stefan james i oh, play wow. his wife and nice. um antoine fuqua um uh executive uh, produced it um and I was in New Orleans, like by myself, didn't know anybody um, for there for like a month and a half. Wow, that must have been a wild so, experience. Yeah, yeah. And like, I think also, so that experience too, again, with like a bunch of men, mm. like the only like woman kind of like holding it down, you know, in, in that space. So just really like claiming my territory and like my space and, um, you know, again, doing like great work um, you know, acting with Lawrence Fishburne, like I mean, come on. Stephon James is really, really good too. He's he's a great actor. So it's just like, just you know, being in the space and being like, you know, putting putting your feet on the ground and like, here I am. Yeah, you know? I can I can do this. Thing. I, I can ready. do this. Absolutely. So by the time Cyrano came around, I was like, kind of in that space already. Mm. But it's different when you're, you know, when you're doing theater and sure. theater etiquette and you know always. Yeah, standing your ground, but also being humble and being nice to, to everybody and, you know, so. That's it's a been great. A, it's been a big year. It's a it's huge year. It's been a big year yeah. of just like learning all of that and being being confident in that as well. Well, I feel like that leads nicely into this show here because with Mrs. Fletcher, I mean, you have a couple different characters that are kind of creating their own lane, taking their own authority. So yeah. what has been the most interesting part of that experience for you? Um... What has been the most interesting part of Mrs. Fletcher? Um, I mean, the story of like, you know, the Jackson's character mm -hmm. who plays Brendan and then his mom and how kind of like porn has influenced them right. in like very, very different ways. It's kind of empowered her as, mm -hmm. a, as she just got divorced and she's like living her life. And with Brendan, he doesn't really know how to treat women or how to have a relationship because all he does is watch porn all the time right. and that's how he interacts. So he meets my character, Chloe, and kind of like flips him around and he like doesn't know what to do and he's kind of like falling for her. It's really, really cute because like he's just so used to, you know, looking at girls mm -hmm. and being like, you know, do you want to go right, in the, the back? Thing, and, the thing, yeah. yeah. And where she's like, no. Nope. She totally Actually, causes BS. Yeah, She's yeah. Like, no, she just I'm not like, having this. No, like, <laughs> um, so it, it was just. It's really. I I really like, like playing her, and mm -hmm. um, she's very like, as you said, like woke. You know, she she uh, she has this like program um, where you know where she she brings him to this program mm -hmm. because his brother has like special needs, and so. She runs the program with with family members that that deal that have siblings or yeah with, with special needs and she I don't know she just kind of like open opens his mind to to 
more things. Yeah. <laughs> There's so he much more that. than Let's your little that. suburban town, and he feels out of place, and I think he kind of feels really, I don't think he really knows who he is, no. you know, he's at all. He's still trying to figure that out. And he's still trying to figure that out, and I think she brings um, a little bit of himself out, and he kind of feels really comfortable around her, and he doesn't have to be a certain way, a certain way yeah. or what everybody thinks that he should be. Right. And she's just like, come on, man, just, chill just out. Chill. Just chill. Exactly. Just chill, just like be yourself and, you know. So it's it's it was cool, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, identity is a huge part of it for him. He's like yeah. the big man on campus in high school. Yeah. Mrs. Fletcher is obviously in a rough mm -hmm. spot in her life and then they finally just start to change. So I know. what's it like kind of unpacking identity and, and some of that stuff with this show? Um, hey, I mean, I think we all kind of go through like who we are and I think like, as I said, in this year, just kind of like unpacking and like s staying true to mm -hmm. myself and grounded. And I think, you know, his character, he doesn't know who he is right. and he's all over the place and he meets her and she knows exactly who she is. Oh, she's and fully she's formed. she's very full formed and fully confident in who she is as a woman, you know, and also like as a person and, and who she wants to be and she's constantly changing and like that, that's, and that's okay, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's kind of nice playing that person also like with what I've been going through sure. <laughs> this whole year as well. So I don't know. Um, it's been it's been a cool process, I guess. Definitely. Yeah. So how would you compare yourself now to where you were like when Hamilton's off Broadway? Like who well, who's that woman? Who is that yeah. woman? What, what was Jasmine looking like then? Um Jasmine was uh, just so excited that that show was like her first Broadway show. Which is insane. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Yeah. Your first show yeah. was Hamilton, an all-timer. Yeah. yeah, 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 my first Broadway show. Um, and I, I was just trying to, at the moment, just trying to take everything in. Mm -hmm. That experience was such a whirlwind um, of like, there was so much that was happening like in those, in that, two year span and I was literally just trying to sink it. <laughs> right. Like just kind of soak it like all in, you know, and everybody was like, Jazz, like you might not know what's like going on at the moment because it's hard to like process <laughs> yeah. and you'll process it later. And I think I was just, I was literally just trying to, to soak it all yeah. in and, and realize like that this is happening, you know? Because it, it was a show that like, you know, everybody's like, you know, you made history and it's part of history and it's like such a big thing, but it's true, you know? It absolutely is It true. really is true. So, and you don't really realize that until like you leave, you leave it of like how big that thing is. Like sometimes it's like hard to comprehend, you know? I know. I mean, even so, just with all the shows going on around the country now, like that yeah, wasn't a thing no, a couple years ago. No, it was not a thing. And I think like I really realized that when the album came out, mm. that's when it changed. You know, that's when people started like literally the next day people were like mouthing the words to the show. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, this is so much bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, you know? it's, it's insane. So I went with my wife in August. For my oh. birthday. Oh yeah. My wife is still listening to the album. Still. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just an everyday one of those, thing. It's one of those things, and I think like it'll be with people forever. Absolutely. You know, it'll it'll always be like a part of a part of me. And think know? about how much everybody learned about history too. I know. It was just in a totally different way. I know. Imagine like if we all learned about history in that way, We'd or like absorb a lot more. You could abs absorb so much. Because there's so much of it that just goes right over our heads, I but know. you put it in a different style, and it's like, I know. oh, now I know all the stories. Yeah. And especially for Hamilton too, it's like I know all the different people in his life. I know yeah. what was going on with Washington, the women that were yeah. in his life, like. There's yeah. a lot to that guy. Yes. And he finally got the center stage to really uh, see what exactly, he's all about. Exactly, exactly. So, I don't know, schools learn this. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tailor it to different audiences, not exactly. just the same message to the same audience. And not just, you know, take a chalkboard and just talk for like two hours no, about... It's monotonous. Hi you know, history. Like, uh, kids would pay more attention, and they do. Like, they do. Uh, doing those like student matinees, like mm -hmm. they were so hyped oh, and like must have so been excited, hyped. Yeah. and like you know, it's just um, it was really really cool, but also a whirlwind. And I I think at that moment, I was twenty five. I was just trying to 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 be in the moment yeah. and let it soak in and look around and be like, oh, here we are today. You know, <laughs> literally take it day by day because. 
that was that was an experience for sure. Definitely, <laughs> and like a, a bunch of you guys have jumped into like stuff in film and TV also. Like yeah. it was a really special group of people too. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it just goes to show it wasn't just theater. Like these are just talented artists. Yeah. And I think it's awesome that everybody's seeing that now. Everyone was so original. Yeah. You know, just really like colorful and like their personalities like came out like the way that like David raps mm -hmm. like he's just he's so good at what he does you know and what he brought to um you know Jefferson and like Lafayette like I mean come on <laughs> again a totally you know, different way to digest totally, who Jefferson was exactly yeah. um and he you know he put his stamp on it so I was just really really lucky and happy and every day I was like wow I'm I'm a part of this yeah, yeah, it's dope. Yeah. Definitely is. <laughs> so, what are some other things you'd like to do? Because, like, you, you've done a bunch of things, but you still got a lot ahead of you. So, what else yeah. is interesting for you? I mean, <clears throat> I've been working um, on my EP. I've been working on my own music for a while now, um, and we just got like the artwork back nice. for it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I I never try to put myself in a box, and mm -hmm. I'm always trying to do different things. Everybody's like, "What's your favorite?" thing to do and I'm like just at the whatever you don't have to pay the great project is at the moment like that's that's what I'm here for so uh, so right now I'm I'm working I'm working on that and um, oh, what else <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I did a movie called blind spotting with David okay. and with Rafa oh nice um, and that came out last two a uh, few years I can't even remember, <laughs> uh, but they're, like they're in development for um, making it into uh, a TV show. Awesome. Yeah, so That's that'll really happen. Cool. Well, who, who knows? But I think you you got a, enough going on at this yeah, point. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, man. So just trying to, you know, stay stay in the creative process, whatever that is. You know. Who are the big influences for you? Like, who are people you like to look to? Gary Oldman is my favorite actor. Is he really? Why yeah, is that? Of all time, because he's a he's he's like a complete transformer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, you'll watch a movie, and then the end credits will come, and you're like, oh my god, that was <laughs> Gary Oldman. Like, what? Like, you don't even recognize him. I just love the way that he carries himself, and it's just completely 100% like about the work that mm. he does, and can completely transform himself and um, I just I really look up to him a lot have you met him before I've never met him <sighs> gotta make that happen oh man <laughs> if I ever met him I don't know if I even have will have like words no words I think I would, I'd be speechless what's, <laughs> what's your favorite Gary Oldman movie there's a there's a uh, there's a lot but I, my, my one of my favorite movies of all time mm. is the fifth element mm. And I just love that he's in it. Yeah. But I think, like, overall, like, I mean, cr even Chris Tucker in yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Like, his performance <laughs> in that is insane. Forget about that. Like, insane. <laughs> and you're like, what? Like, what? <laughs> I, I, like, he completely transforms, too. I just think it was, it's such a, it's such a dope movie. I mm. love that movie. It was also, like, the first movie where I saw, like, a black president. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah when I was, like, 10 years old. I was like, whoa. And especially like, at that time, too. Yeah. Like, these aren't the characters I'm yeah. seeing in, in TV I think it, I think that movie was so ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. um, and there was something about it that was, like, so unique. Um, and, like, with all these, like, amazing people in it. So um, I would say The Fifth Element. I mean, he's got... He's got plenty, but... Yeah, he's got plenty. It's a good one to choose. Yeah. And, like, The Darkest Hour... Mm. I mean, talk about, like, transformation. Yeah, like, hitting you don't in a whole even, different way. You don't even, like, recognize him. That, that's the best like, acting that you can do. If yeah. you can't even tell who that is, like you said. That's what I mean. And in credits, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> that's what that I person's mean, in the dude. movie? <laughs> yeah. And he does, like, all these different accents, and I I'm, I love accents. So, I don't know. I, I just think uh, he's he's a person that um, I definitely look up to. And I think also Jamie Foxx of mm -hmm. just, like, all the mediums. Of, he's like, everywhere. He's yeah. And doing, like, everything, <laughs> you know, like, under the sun. He had his own album. He, like... He does movies. Mm -hmm. He had a TV show. I just right, think he can do like game show hosting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he could do like er anything. <laughs> so I think like as far as a person, me, where like creatively, I could, there's a lot that I can do. Mm -hmm. I think uh, he's a, he's another one where I'm like, you're awesome. 
Yeah. No need to put yourself in a box. Just yeah. keep doing it all. Keep doing it all. Awesome. Yeah. Good deal. Jasmine, really <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet Thanks you, Thanks a lot. Check her out. You. Mrs. Fletcher has got her show. When? How long is it running until? Uh, we run, Serena runs until December 22nd. All right. If you're in the city, check it out. For Jasmine, I'm DJ. <laughs> See you next time. You're on Sit Down.